Hey guys, Zelonius here. Welcome to another video on my channel. This is a must watch one. This is all about the common mistakes that so many people make in FIFA and they don't even realize they're doing them. It holds them back and stops them getting more wins in weekend league and probably stops them getting the next rank. So if you want to get more wins in weekend league, this is a video for you. My channel is dedicated to helping you improve at FIFA. So please consider subscribing to my channel if you want that if you want new tactics videos especially when new patches drop i'm always giving updated tactics tactics that have helped me hit 30 and 0 in weekend league i've hit 10 this year i do review of the new content every day when it releases i do gameplay tips tutorials telling you all the best ways of attacking defending breaking people down on the game and i'll be reviewing the best players and telling you who you need to pick up for your ultimate team if you want a channel dedicated to helping you get better at fifa this is the one for you. Let's get into this video and look at the first mistake people regularly make on FIFA 21. There's a famous quote that I like that says, failing to prepare is preparing to fail. And we don't want to prepare to fail. So the best place to start with the common mistakes that people make, number one is team management and game plan. So by that, I mean looking at your team, looking at your tactics, because so many people don't really have a game plan when they go into games and it ends up costing them big time yes you're probably looking at my team and thinking oh Zell anyone could hit a really good rank with that team well I hit a 30 and 0 with a 300k team early December I did a video on that team whilst it does make a difference and it does help it probably will get you a couple of extra wins is far from the most important thing and whether you're on a budget of 100k is it a hundred thousand coins or 30 million coins there's things you can do with your team to get the absolute most out of it. So the starting point will be getting players who suit the game. So unfortunately, if you want to get the most wins possible, and I'm assuming if you're watching a video like this, that's why you're here, you need to have players that suit the game. So whilst you might be a big fan of Ruud van Nistelrooy, back from his early Man United days, he doesn't suit the game. Ruud van Nistelrooy's prime probably costs a similar amount to Neymar, but Neymar's way better on the game. You might be a big fan of Carlos Poyol and Barcelona, but as stupid as it is, Klosterman's Champions League card is better than Prime Poyol. It's, it's silly and it really frustrates me, but that's just the way FIFA is. And I do videos regularly where I look at the best players, I tell you why they're the best players, and I go through the stats. A quick overview of it is basically for defence. The mistake you don't want to make is having slow defenders. On this game, it does not matter how good you are. If you have slow defenders, you will concede some goals you can do nothing about. So you can see here, all my defenders are really quick. My centre-backs have mid-80 um, plus pace. My full-backs have 90 plus pace. And even if I wasn't using very expensive cards, I would use a card like Ferland Mendy, normal Kyle Walker, Semedo, normal Klosterman, uh, normal Joe Gomez. Cards that are still cheap, but suit the game. In midfield, you want players who have solid passing, not that slow. They don't have to be really quick, but not too slow. Decent weak foot. Um, in attack, you need at least a four-star weak foot, 90 plus pace. And if you look on my channel, there's lots of videos where I talk about great value meta players who will do the job for you. So the first mistake to avoid is not using a team that is just going to cost you big time. I play so many people in weekend league who seem like pretty good players, but they just get held back so much by having a really bad team. And I don't mean a really bad team in terms of coin value. I play people with teams worth a few million coins who have useless players in there. And it's just easy because I just do one through ball in behind and the centre-back's too slow. Whereas if they'd used a normal Joe Gomez, he would have stopped that. Varane's a great example as well. So team and the mistakes that people make there, that is one of the biggest ones before we even get onto the pitch and look at gameplay. Mistake two that we're going to look at is game plan and tactics. So you heard me mention it in um, the first mistake, that game plan, having a plan, all this type of thing is something that holds people back. But we ended up talking more about the team and the plan and strategy around team building. Moving forward, I will do more videos where I build some cheap teams for you guys and recommend them based on that. But for now, we're looking at the common mistakes. So the second one, game plan. By game plan, 
I literally mean all the tactics. So to get to there, a lot of people don't even know about this. They don't even use proper tactics. You press LT or L2 to get to your squad actions. You go to custom tactics. And then the balanced one is basically what you set up with for chemistry. But then you have four other options that you could use. I think you should be using all of them. For me, what I do is I have a tactic that I start every game with. It might be a fairly safe, neutral one. Whilst I'm trying to figure out my opponent, I don't want anything too crazy, too risky. And this is the one I use. I'm not going to go into depth about what my tactics are so much. I've got videos dedicated to that. And you probably see that one, I think, drop back to depth. Basically, you have to adapt to what the game currently plays like. So on the current game, drop back, low depth is really good because the game's got really slow and pace is so big. So for me, this is my starting tactic. I use 4-4-2 defensive one the, with the defensive mids. And I start in this. And my idea is I basically stick to this unless I go one goal down or I'm maybe a few goals up play on and they're trying to press me. So I know every game, part of my game plan is I'll stick to this. I'll start every game with this. If I'm playing against someone who I'm really struggling to get the ball off or I go a goal down, I will switch to the same formation but a more aggressive tactic where I kind of take the game to them a bit more so i go press after possession loss higher depth and i just make it harder for my opponent to breathe and i know that i can do this like one of the big issues i see especially when i do lots of coaching and if you're interested in coaching please check the description to this video there's more info on it there i find so many people it does not matter if they're three nil down or three nil up they play in the exact same way and so many people, because of that, and they don't have a game plan that they can adjust and adapt throughout the game, get losses when they're winning because they end up not defending the lead properly or they're losing and they just have no chance of coming back because they don't change. You can't stick on drop back, low depth, with no pressing when you're losing a game and someone's keeping the ball. So for me, this tactic's perfect for that. And then I have... So the, these two there, the defensive and the attacking, are fairly neutral, but they're just a slight differences to them. My ultra defensive one is super negative, but this one is solely for the basis of if I'm winning late on, I'm trying to park the bus and see a game out because sometimes you have to do that. I go to this very defensive formation and I just play safe, keep the ball. It's only something I'll use right at the end of a game to see a game out, but it's vital and it will get you those extra wins that a lot of people miss out on because they're still playing stupid, attacking football, giving the ball away. <clears throat> my ultra attacking this one is crazy and very risky it's high risk high reward it's one of these that you can get ripped apart in it but if you're free four nil down with one half to go what have you got to lose if you keep playing normal you are never coming back into the game i go five three two because it means that i've still got three center backs to help me with and i can defend even when i lose the ball but i send the wing backs all out attack and it's crazy and overloads the opponent so what it does is it gives me a chance of getting back into the game it's crazy constant pressure 10 depth but it turns some games that i might have lost into wins and so many people have used my tactics have said that they found games that they might have lost before they managed to turn into wins because they had this game plan to turn to so don't be that guy who doesn't have a game plan doesn't know what to do at different parts of the game have a strategy know how you're going to adjust throughout the game and that will help you get so many more wins mistake number three is diving in i cannot begin to explain how many times i see people in coaching lessons or when i'm even just playing weekend league games give such easy goals away just because they're diving in and getting patient my philosophy on defending and if you can apply this to your game i think it will be a game changer for you and could be the biggest mistake people make the easiest way for you to improve quickly is when you're defending don't give easy goals away if you concede it should be for one of two reasons one you've made uh, your opponent's done something brilliant and scored a fantastic goal and you just have to take your hat off to them and say great goal i'll be honest it's very rare that that happens or two because you've just got very unlucky you've done everything right and you still conceded like you made three tackles and it kept bouncing back to them or they shot from miles out, hit, rebounded and gave them a goal. Again, I'll be honest, it's very rare that you'll concede a goal that you couldn't have done anything different about. Most goals on FIFA come from what I call unforced errors, or in other words, mistakes. 
And diving in is the biggest one of them all. So many people dive in and give such easy goals away. It just hurts them. Watch this goal I score here. There's no danger at this point. Look, I've got one, two, three, four, five attackers, really. And he's got plenty of defenders, especially around here, to deal with me. Now watch what happens. I do one pass. He kind of is diving in a bit there and not really doing anything with this guy. This guy could have been marking here. That is another thing you need to do when you're defending. Mark the danger area. The danger area, for me, is where the goal's going to come from. There's not much danger in De Bruyne this far out having the ball. But Lewandowski getting the ball there and isolating the centre-back, that's pretty dangerous. So I get the ball here now. The one thing this guy does not want to do now is dive in like that and let me turn him. I'm not going to turn up there because he's got a centre-back there who can deal with me. So really with Goosens, Gossens, the defender he's got, he just needs to occupy this area, back off and make it hard for me to score. It is not very easy to dribble around people on this game. This is what I'm saying when I say you're not going to concede many goals when your opponent does something special because most people aren't great at tricks or dribbling to do something like that and the gameplay doesn't really allow it. If he dives in here, he's going to give me an easy goal and watch what happens. He gives me lit That's not even the worst diving in, but he literally gives me just that half a yard and concedes because of it. So let's watch it back. There's no danger. I pass there and then there, he gives me just this little gap to get past him whereas really he needs to switch and just mark there and that little diving in just gives me that space to get the ball out my feet and even on a weak foot i can score it and there at 4-2 to change the game to 5-2 that pretty much ends the game whereas reality like i say it was as simple as not dive in mark that area and i don't score this happens all the time and is a common mistake you need to avoid stand your ground don't dive in, make yourself hard to beat, mark the most dangerous option, and I can promise you, you will concede a lot less goals. Mistake number four is one that, again, I see all the time, and it is rushing and being impatient. <clears throat> this can be a thing in defense, diving in kind of similar to this, but going forward is a really big one. So many times, people are so close to getting a fantastic chance, and they mess it up just by being impatient. And rushing the opportunity so look here <clears throat> my opponent's in the attack here i'm trying to just control this area now with my cdms and he get makes a good pass there we'll watch that back sometimes the software does this stupid thing so now if you look here he's got pogba making a run there going into a great position he's got lozano occupying my left back he's got gomez making a good run here so what does he do now the thing he should do is be a little bit patient, take that extra touch and wait for one of these players to make a run and give him that space. But instead, he forces the pass facing the wrong way. And look there. It allows me to very quickly counter-attack because counter-attacks when you lose the ball in a bad position on this game are a really great way to turn a defence into attack. And here, I turn him. I end up messing this attack up. I should have kept running there, to be honest. I end up messing the attack up. But all that has come from, in a great position, him just giving the ball away stupid. So many people could improve straight away just by increasing their pass accuracy. Increasing your pass accuracy, if you have 80% passing, that means you are giving the ball away one in five passes. If you have 90%, you're giving it away one in 10. If you have 95%, that is one in 20. So just by upping your passing accuracy by 15%, you can make yourself give the ball away four times less if you're giving the ball away one in five passes it's going to be pretty hard to score a goal because most attacks need more than five passes if you're giving it away one in 20 you're going to have a lot more chances to score not rushing the ball forward not being impatient giving it away stupid is going to give you more chance and time for your players to make space it's going to mean you have the ball more and if you have the ball your opponent can't score you can it's going to instantly improve you and is a mistake that is so frustrating to watch because people get so close to doing something really good and then their impatience, forcing the ball forward, costs them big time. The fifth and final mistake I'm going to talk about in this video is needless skills. Skills are not something I will discourage, I will encourage them. I say regularly on my videos, one of the best ways to improve at this game is to have two or three minimum skills 
that you can rely on, that you know you can break your opponent down with. So many people are so predictable on this game, and it really holds them back, because when they get to the edge of the box, they don't really know how to break their opponent down if their opponent doesn't dive in. One of the reasons people who aren't necessarily that fantastic at the game, but are quite consistent and can hit elite without doing anything too complicated, is because they just do the FIFA fundamentals right. So by the FIFA fundamentals, I mean like not doing the mistakes we've talked about in this video, not giving the ball away cheaply, not diving in. There's more things that I could make a second video about if you guys are interested in. If you want me to make a second video, please let me know. I could talk about things like not sprinting as much, not giving the ball away cheaply on set pieces, things like that. But one of the things that they don't do is they don't dive in. And sometimes the only way to break someone down is with good tricks. I've got videos where I talk specifically about tricks that I recommend. Some of the good ones on this game right now are the ball roll, roulette, uh, dead stop fake into La Criqueta, the bridge. And these tricks are all good. But doing these tricks for the sake of it in random positions, that just isn't going to be helpful. And look at my opponent here, how he gives the ball away. So he's got the ball here. He's got an easy pass up there. There. He could go there, there. He's got so many options. So what does he do? It's one all. He doesn't want to give me the ball and be stupid. Dead stop fake, that's fine. Into a lacquer care. And then that. All right. Excuse the alerts. This is gameplay recorded from my live streams. If you've never checked one of my live streams out, it's the Lonious 92 on Twitch. I stream every day. You can ask me live questions, watch me play live gameplay, um, and just join in my community on Twitch. It's a great place to be. It'd be nice to see you there. You can see here, there's no reason really for him to do a trick. Dead stop fake, lacquer care, and then there, like, what has that achieved? He's achieved absolutely nothing with these tricks. It's not got him anywhere. And then he does a bridge. Like The bridge is only really needed, in my opinion, when you're trying to take it around someone who's diving in. And it's gone from him having the ball there, in that part of the pitch, completely safe, to just giving me the ball in a 2v2 counter attack. I end up messing this up. Like That was useless from me. And I shouldn't have given the ball away there. But he gave me a chance to counter attack for a needless trick. Again, look, this just isn't achieving anything. Don't do needless tricks that are just going to not help you. They're going to slow you down, if anything, and they give your opponent more chance of getting the ball back. Quite often when you do more than one trick, you start to lose control of the ball more, especially in delay, it's hard to react, and it holds you back. There, it allows a counter-attack. If you give the ball away five times in a game with a stupid trick that's not achieving anything, that could lead to a goal that one time that costs you. Use tricks effectively. So the mistake is using tricks needlessly, but then you can turn that mistake into using them effectively, using them in the right positions. I've done videos on skill moves and how to do that, so I'd recommend checking that out. But that's the thing about all these mistakes that we've talked about in this video. Instead of making the mistakes, turn it into the positive. So the first one, instead of using the wrong type of players, use good meta players that sue it. Number two, instead of not having a good strategy, a good game plan, not really having tactical adjustments, have them. Follow my tactics guide. Listen to what I say in that. Number three. What was number three? Number three was not diving in, wasn't it? Number three. Instead of diving in and giving easy goals away, stand your ground. Be organised. Be hard to beat. Number four. Instead of just rushing the play forward, not really playing with any thought process, giving the ball away cheaply, don't do it. Play safe or work on your pass accuracy. Look for the players in space. And number five. The final one we did, instead of doing needless tricks, still use them, but use them in effective positions when they're going to make a difference. Guys, I hope this video has been able to help you. If you'd like to see a part two for this, because there's lots more I can talk about in this area of FIFA, please let me know. Like I say, please subscribe to the channel if you want more content like this. To hit the notification bell so you know exactly when my videos are going live. Like the video, comment, let me know what you want to see more of. This channel's for you guys. Appreciate you guys' support. Love the Zellboy Army. Have a great evening. See you next time.